traders, welcome to this video. Will Sebastian here, another very important one. This will rule your swing trading, essentially, if you get it right. So watch the whole way through. I'm going to cover an absolute ton. It's fantastic. Don't forget, I'm live on Zoom teaching all my academy how I day trade for income, as I've shown on many, many videos for a long time. So don't forget, go underneath. It'll be right there, and you can come and join us. So let's kick it off. Well, as you will have seen from the title, how do I use weekly charts uh, to trade forex markets, indice markets, gold, oil, all sorts of things. I would say first off the bat, definitely for sure, if you're looking to trade um, via the longer term, mostly you will need to use the weekly. Uh, there are people who just completely ignore the <laughs> high time frames. I don't know why they do it, but they do. Um, and it's not a good idea. It really isn't. Because when you do that, when you ignore those higher time frames, essentially what you're doing is just kissing goodbye to the long term outlook. If you're trading a market long term, obviously you're going to need to know the long term outlook. So that's the first thing off the bat. I would say weekly charts are very ideal for that. Of course, you could scale further to your monthly and things like that. OK, and obviously, as you go down the tiers, daily, four hour, etc., that you know, the view gets shorter or the, the you know, the, in, in terms of time, mostly. Of course, your long term uh, sentiment is going to be absolutely reflected by things like your weekly chart. So if you're looking to track a market like a Forex market, for example, in a in a somewhat newfound downtrend like you've seen here. I mean, we've been seeing this since August of uh, 2023, OK, with one pivot here and a second one there. So if you're looking for a further fall, which would fit the sentiment bias absolutely, you would need to uh, be using a higher time frame to understand that the long term sentiment is pulling the pound New Zealand down, okay, with favour going into the New Zealand dollar rather than the pound for a more dovish outlook on the GBP, essentially an earlier cut of rates and therefore a divesting. And also, just from a technical perspective, you'd be able to know that you've had rejection here several times and Price is a little bit persistent, but still within the long term, you're looking um, a downside move. And that flow of, uh, or the order flow, essentially, you can call it what you want, uh, at this point is going to the short side, like I said, in the long term. So using the weekly shows you that. If I swap to the 15 minute, what can I see? Nothing. Okay, basically nothing. All right, so the 15 minute tells me I'm going up. And this is where traders get confused because they think this is an uptrend, okay, which it is on your lower time frames. And people who have no concept of time frames, risk management, or anything will get long somewhere like this. Now, it absolutely could be the case. It could that you fly up again, could do that, right? But if you scale out and you go to your weekly, it looks a pretty awful place to buy, doesn't it? Because you're in a long term downtrend, you've already had a rise up. And even worse, you've had rejection at this area several times. Now, again, going off the title of this video more specifically, what you can see here are weekly uh, weekly whips. OK, so that's telling me on the longer term, you're going sideways, at least for now, or at least the midterm, March till now. In the long term, you're moving tentatively down, if you like. Um, so that's really important information because I know now, at least in the nearish term, the near to midterm, it's reasonably likely that we may get rejection again. And the sentiment bias around the pound versus the New Zealand long term, at least the way it looks like it's going from the rhetoric from, uh, you know, the, the individual central banks in those respective areas, supports that. You know, you're coming into a place where nothing has changed really since, um, since the last candle wick. And of course, the candle wick before that as well. So really key information that you just wouldn't see if you weren't on your weekly. OK, so I know this would be a reasonable place to short. I'm short this morning on the pound New Zealand. And I'm also short, even more preferably, I would say, on the Euro New Zealand. And you can see you've got something similar here. You've got this tentative fall um, over the near to mid term. And up here is all your key price action. So I wouldn't be shocked at all. If you either fall from here intraday or you fall from there intraday to long term. And I would only find that visible, really, if I was looking at my weekly chart, because what I can now see again, clearly, is a long term downtrend. I can see 
the long-term sentiment bias as well as the technical bias supports and favours the, the long-term swing move to the downside. All right? Again, I can only see that by flicking to my weekly. If I'm not on my weekly, I'm looking at the next, you know, hours or five minutes you can see on this five-minute chart. So if it does become the case you pull down here, there'll be many traders who think that's a long. All right. Now, technically, on a very near-term basis, okay, ignoring the weekly, yes, it is a long. But if you're looking for the long-term move, which lots of traders are, are swing traders, myself included, I'm short on this this morning uh, with my bias, would rather sell up here and not be buying. So there's a clear difference, isn't there? There's a difference between what the lower time frames provide and, of course, what the higher time frames provide. The higher time frames, like your weekly, and the actual use of the weekly as an important measure of value within the long-term spectrum of a Forex market, is, it, you know, the purpose is for you to be able to continue a downtrend like this and look short rather than buying in the near term. Because if you're buying in the near term with a long-term outlook using the weekly, uh, you're going to get stuck. You are. Um, and it's the same to the, to the long side. You know, if the market falls, and I know these aren't entirely parallel, but they're almost there. If the market does fall to the downside, okay, you would then be looking long on those respective weekly areas like this, okay, which I'm now labeling. So those all exist to the downside. It would coincide with key moving averages, which you can again see on your, on your weekly charts. And of course, your uh, lower side of your trend line all around here. So it's really important to know that not only can you see the long term sentiment bias and the long term technical bias from a weekly chart, but you can also see where your indicators are. You can see clearly you're well above, well above your 100 MA and your 200 MA. So again, that's an even better time to short. It's your well above average. Okay, well above average. Now, if you go to your five minute again, you're not well above average. You're slightly above average. Okay, like 50 pips from your 100 MA and your nearest 20, you're bang on there. So if you were getting long now, you're just completely refusing to engage in the long term market, which you can see clearly exists uh, on your higher time frame. And it's telling you it's not a long, you know, it's a short. And should the market sentiment continue like it like it may, um, you'll find that it falls and falls and falls because markets are ruled by sentiment and sentiment is absolutely reflective on the long term on your higher time frames. The fact that you've got, you know, perhaps a longer term outlook for a dovish ECB and a more hawkish uh, RBNZ is not going to be told by the one minute or the five minute because the five minute is telling you that you're going up. The five minute is telling you it's the opposite. Okay, and that the euro is gaining investment. But that's not the case long term, and it's only viewable on things like that weekly chart, right? So it's really important to remember absolutely that and the point of your weekly chart um, as a whole. Okay, so I hope that helps, guys. I hope it makes a lot of sense. If it does, doesn't let me know in the comments. Don't forget, I'm teaching live every single day. Uh, at least 10 hours a week mostly. So go underneath, you can grab it, and I'll see you in the next one. See you there, guys.